Hello and welcome to the podcast for Chapter 2, England's Colonial Experiments, the 17th Century. In the 17th century, different and sometimes desperate groups of English settlers established several colonies in North America. The English way of colonization differed from that of Spain in that English colonization did not emanate from the desire to create a centralized empire in the New World. Breaking away English migration to the New World was part of a larger pattern of mobility. The New World was just another destination. Some Englishmen migrated to the New World for economic reasons, leaving poverty and seeking land. Others came seeking religious opportunity or to avoid political strife and conflict in England. The Chesapeake, Dreams of Wealth In the early to mid-17th century, the English established two successful but diverse colonies around the Chesapeake Bay, Virginia and Maryland. Entrepreneurs in Virginia In 1607, the London Company, a joint stock company, built Jamestown in Virginia. This colony, however, experienced numerous problems arising from a hostile natural environment, conflict with local Native Americans, the colonists' failure to work for the common good, and unclear goals. Spinning out of control To save the colony, Captain John Smith took over the management of the town and imposed military order. The London Company also restructured the government and sent more people to keep the colony going. Stinking Weed One key to the eventual success of Virginia was the development by John Rolfe of tobacco as a commercial crop. London Company directors further attracted settlers by giving land grants or head rights, establishing elective local governments, the House of Burgess, and bringing women to the colony. Under the management of Edwin Sandys especially, the colony thrived with new settlers arriving regularly. The Time of Reckoning Disease and battles with the native population made Virginia a dangerous place, especially for indentured servants. Despite increased immigration to Virginia, the mortality rate remained high in Virginia. Such problems, combined with the continual low percentage of women uh, colonists, made establishing a family very difficult. Corruption and Reform In 1624, King James I declared that Virginia was a royal colony to help solve some of the problems plaguing the Virginia colony. James reformed the governance of the colony, appointing a royal governor and a council. Nonetheless, the House of Burgess, which the Stuart monarchs opposed, continued to meet eventually forcing the monarchy to recognize them as a governing body. Despite the changes to the colony's management, the economic and social aspects of life there continued much as before. Tobacco remained the primary crop, and life continued to revolve around the plantation. Maryland, a troubled refuge for Catholics. In the 1630s, Sir George Calvert and his son, the Lords Baltimore, acquired a royal grant to settle a colony north of Virginia, which was named Maryland in honor of the Queen. The second Lord Baltimore insisted on religious toleration of all Christian religions, including Catholicism, within the colony, but this proprietary colony still faced much sectarian trouble during its early days. Reforming England in America Calvinist religious principles played an important role in the colonization of New England. A small group of separatists, or pilgrims, first went to Holland and then settled the Plymouth Plantation. There, these new settlers tried to replicate the villages and communities of England. Without assistance from the local Native Americans, the pilgrims would not have survived the New World. The Great Migration 
The Puritans, a much larger and wealthier group of religious reformers, wanted to escape the tyranny of King Charles I, established the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Under the leadership of John Winthrop, they sailed for the New World to create a better society by purifying English society and the church from within. A City on the Hill Throughout the 1630s, Massachusetts Bay enjoyed a steady stream of new migrants, many coming as entire families, allowing the Puritans to build rigorous religious, economics, and political institutions. Bound by a common purpose that revolved around the same religious goal, the Massachusetts Bay colonies flourished, adopting, adopting a Congregationalist system of church government. The Puritans' religion informed every aspect of their life, but the governments of New England were not theocracies, and though many villages in the colony used democratic town meetings to solve local political problems, neither were they democracies. Unlike in Virginia, the New England, in New England, the town was the center of public life. Limits of Religious Descent For the most part, the European settlers in New England managed to live in peace with one another, primarily because they believed in the rule of law, producing the first code of law printed in English, Lawyers and Liberties. Despite this seemingly united belief system, disagreements did arise with regards to religious beliefs. The Puritans did not practice religious toleration, and those individuals of the colony that disagreed with either the laws or the theology of the legal authority were generally tried as heretics and expelled from Massachusetts Bay. Two of these, Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson, upon leaving Massachusetts Bay, established their own Puritan colonies elsewhere in New England. Breaking away, four colonies, New Hampshire, New Haven, Connecticut, and Rhode Island were established as a result of people leaving Massachusetts Bay. Some, like Roger Williams and Ann Hutchinson, left for religious re reasons, while others were motivated to leave for economic reasons. Diversity in the Middle Colonies The key to the Middle Colonies, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, was social and cultural diversity, both within and among the several colonies. Anglo-Dutch Rivalry on the Hudson The Dutch colony of New Netherland had been settled not only by the Dutch, but also by Finns, Swedes, Germans, and Africans. Under Charles II, England easily wrestled the ill-managed colony from the Dutch and renamed it New York. The diversity in size of New York meant bureaucratic problems for the crown. Confusion in New Jersey Shortly after acquiring New York, the Duke of York awarded the land lying between the Hudson and Delaware rivers to Lord Berkeley and Sir George Carteret, individuals who had supported the crown during the English Civil War. The transfer bred only confusion. In 1674, Berkeley sold his property rights to a group of Quakers, effectively splitting the colony in two. In 1702, the Crown reunited New Jersey into a single colony, but it never prospered the way that New York did, and struggling with much internal political discord as well as conflicts with the Crown and other colonies. Quakers in America because they were persecuted in England, the Quakers, or Friends, came to the New World and settled Pennsylvania. Quaker Belief and Practices Quakers turned away from Calvinism and its belief of original sin and eternal predestination. In Quaker theology, everyone possessed an inner light that offered salvation there was no need for a learned ministry because everyone's interpretation of the scriptures were valid. 
The Quakers practiced a humble lifestyle not centered around social rank and position because all were equal in the eyes of the Lord. The Quakers actively worked to convert others to their truth. Penn's Holy Experiment William Penn, a avid Quaker convert who was briefly involved with the New Jersey proprietorship, was awarded the proprietorship of a vast area of land in the New World called Pennsylvania, or Penn's Woods. There he tried to establish a complex society and government based on Quaker principle. Its complexity caused lasting problems for the management of the colony. Settling Pennsylvania Penn and other Quakers promoted the colony aggressively throughout the colonies, England and the rest of the world. The colony welcomed people of all faiths, all faiths nationalities, making Pennsylvania a remarkably diverse colony. Although Pennsylvania was economically successful as a colony, its social diversity often caused internal conflicts. Penn was forced by legal problems to leave Pennsylvania and return to England in 1701. He died there in 1718, a poor and disillusioned man. Planting the Carolinas Though the area south of the Chesapeake, known as the Carolinas, shared many similarities with Virginia and Maryland, it evolved quite differently. The fabled solid south of the 19th century did not exist during the colonial period. Proprietors of the Carolinas The English settled the land south of Virginia as a result of a restoration of King Charles II. He offered the area as a reward to the few of his followers, the true and absolute Lord Proprietor of Carolina had great trouble attracting settlers to their colonies. Conditions in England had also improved that the steady stream of willing migrants had run dry. Hoping to draw settlers from other colonies, the Lord Proprietors offered generous land grants only to find such settlers difficult to attract. The Barbadian Connection The eventual success of the Carolinas was largely the result of the work of Anthony Ashley Cooper, the Earl of Shaftesbury, and the migration of wealthy families from Barbados. Migrants from Barbados came as families and individuals, some bringing with them large gangs of slaves, creating a slave-based uh, plantation society more similar to the islands than any mainland British colony. The colony experimented with several cash crops, including beef, animal skins, and naval stores, finally discovering the profitability of rice by the 1690s. Continually plagued by political disagreement between the proprietors and the settlers, and among the settlers themselves, the king in 1729 divided the colony into North Carolina and South Carolina and made them both royal colonies. The Founding of Georgia the colony of Georgia resulted from the utopian vision of General James Oglethorpe. He settled the land south of Charleston in order to give hope to the debtors imprisoned in London and at the same time occupy land claimed by both England and Spain. Facing resistance from the settler, settlers, Oglethorpe's utopian goals soon faded and Georgia struggled economically and politically in its early years. The themes that connect the history of the early colonial development are hard work and, most importantly, diversity. Well, once again, that is the podcast for Chapter 2. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Please email me at dshocket at washoe, dot k12 dot nv dot us and until next time we'll cast you later